basic of סמל keys או of jot jwt and uh, tokens quicky uh, security is an area which is complex but in many times it is complex not of because of the subjects themselves but it is complex because all the terminology that is going on so security is one of these concepts where you have so much terminology and you want to connect it to the real life um, it feels like you need some kind of a dictionary in order to uh, understand security and it's changing there are new terms coming on so I think you already know what security is you already know security you just need to connect the terms to the actual security concepts and this is what we are going to do here um, okay so we have these concepts we have these main terms I mean 80% of the deprecative principle of security or 80% of what you are going to uh, tackle while we do programming is one of those <coughs> you're going to um, you're going to work with basic off with SAML with keys with off with jot with tokens it's all encompassing it's encompassing authentication authorization encryption private and, pri uh, and public keys asymmetric keys and symmetric keys but these are the main concepts that you should uh, be familiar with so to scan this very quickly uh, basic off is the most basic thing we'll talk about it SAML is when large corporates talk about security if keys and uh, tokens are like username and uh, passwords they are uh, some some kind of something that you prove that that you can do something for example I get access token from a service which proves that who I am that I got this access token and I get a secret uh, token and uh, we have OAuth for uh, authorization and we have JOT and we'll talk about it okay so let's start with basic authentication so this is as basic as it can get basic authentication uh, because you simply uh, pass in HTTP headers uh, you pass the username and the password in clear text you only base 64 it so what you do is base base 64 on username and pass which provides you with the basic authentication a uh, token when we say token we mean token means okay something like this this is a token uh, when we do base 64 to a username and password we put it in a header and then we transfer it to the server the token that we got okay and the server sees that we uh, know what the user and the password is so it allows us to access it of course because basic authentication does not say anything about encryption um, this means that we want to use HTTPS or some other kind of encryption but basic authentication itself does not say anything about encryption it's a clear text from the protocol itself so we can use HTTPS to encrypt it and this is all we have to say about uh, basic authentication now let's move on to SAML uh, SAML is an abbreviation tool for security assertion markup language right and this is when large corporates in the XML area if you remember all the SOA the service oriented architecture and XML was ruling uh, the world so they came up with a scheme for authentication and authorization they called it a uh, SAML it's another protocol for authentication uh, it's like basic authentication we talked about basic authentication so SAML is also used for authentication and authorization so it's another protocol for authentication and you all you need to do 
is that you use XML for it and it was used by large organizations and it's uh, rather uh, complex. We are not programming here in this session anything we do, we just want to understand the concept. So if someone tells you basic authentication, you know, oh, it's base 64 of username and password and I put it in the authorization uh, header as a uh, bearer. Okay, if someone tells you SAML, you know, oh, it's security assertion markup language, it's based on XML, it's for la mainly used by large corporates, and uh, uh, SAML is also talking about service provider and it's talking about identity provider. The service provider is the one that gives you the service. Uh, let's say I have a bookstore or uh, so the service provider is the bookstore but I authenticate to the bookstore so I will use an uh, identity provider. The identity provider is the one whom which I prove my identity and then we do exchange of XMLs with uh, the parties to prove my identity and so I can authenticate to the service. The identity provider is uh, worried about identity and the service provider is worried about giving me service. So they are decoupled. This is, somebody is uh, talking about this. Somebody also has a standard way to do SSO, which is a single sign on because we have the identity provider and we have many other service providers then I can log in to identity provider with a single a set of credentials and then log in to the, all the other service providers I do not need to log in again I already have my login but it's also complex we have said that SAML was originated by large corporates, so it's it's co it's it's complex uh, mechanism. It was uh, originated, as we said, in the XML area, and today we have a simpler methods for doing so. And with that, we finished with basic authentication SAML, and we move on to the next term, which is O of 2.0. At this point, you ask yourself, what about O of 1.0? So it was more complex because in um, in uh, O of 1.0, you needed to sign any call. You needed to sign the calls again and again. And O, o, and o of 2.0, it simplifies this because it gives you like a one-time token and with this token you can just pass this token all around and you don't need to resign your uh, requests. So OAuth originally is not about authentication although you can do authentication with Open ID which uses OAuth. Its Open ID is a protocol on top of OAuth using like O of 2.0 in order to do authentication, but O of itself does not talk about uh, authorization. Uh, sorry, authentication. It's an authorization uh, protocol. O of does not talk also about the encryption. Not about encryption. It does not actually encrypt stuff. It does not tells you to. It does not enforce you to encrypt or to use HTTPS. But you might find yourself using the encryption. But in the protocol itself, there was no encryption. So so far, there was no encryption here, no encryption here, and no encryption in OAuth. But you are using encryption because you get the token and then you send it to the server. And tokens are like the new credentials. Tokens, which are basically only these things, they are the new credentials. So you are using uh, in the past where you, you sent username and password to servers, now you simply send uh, tokens to a uh, server. So, say token, do not say username and password, it's pretty much the same. You send some proof that you know something, that you have something to a server, you log in with the identity server, you get back a token and you send it to the service a server. What you send is either an access token or you use 
refresh token in order to refresh your token and get back a new token a new access token in order to access the server. So if you need the access token and it expired, then you do get access token, you pass it the refresh token that you got originally from the server and you get back an access token. And you go with that access token to the service. So you do service.access token, I want something, you provide a service or maybe service.get book and passes the access token of course everything is going through the headers so every, all, all the above uh, I think they are all going through the HTTP authorization header which is part of the HTTP uh, protocol you can put header so you put the authorization header you put barrier okay and you put here your access token or you put here your basic authentication so everything, authorization header is like the king, you, when you need to call something, a service, you use the authorization header and you write bur and then you pass either the access token or the basic authentication or the other stuff. So you find yourself using it very much. Jot. There is a lot of talk about Jot. And the... Um, and uh, with Jot, which is uh, JWT, um, the big thing, it's not that big thing, but the big thing with Jot is that you pass some payload in the Jot. Meaning you don't only pass some username and password token credentials, you also pass uh, some more information, which is called claims. So inside the Jot, you pass a, some claims. For example, I am entitled for a free book every month. So Jot is a great way to bundle not only not only security data but additional data. So this is the big thing because before that you had to think for yourself how to pass the additional data and now with Jot you had like a standard way to push the Jot. And again, it is using the authorization header. So you use again the authorization and you do bearer and you put inside the Jot. So it's always the same. It's always the authorization header. In the Jot you have the free part. You probably heard of them. I'm not... Oh, I don't want to talk here about the stuff that everyone talks about. So you have the header, the payload, and the signature. The signature is using signature is using HMAC SHA-256, which is the protocol or the function that is used to hash the messages that you send. So you hash with the secret key and you compute the signature, the HMAC meaning hash with the secret key to generate signatures so everyone knows that it's coming from you. So Jot is very good for stateless data APIs because you pass around the Jot with the data, you pass it to the servers and back and you get a Jot and you can follow the Jot so it's very good for statelessness. Why it's good for statelessness? Again, because Jot has data inside it. You don't store it in cookies or whatever. You you are passing always the data, so it's good for statelessness. This is the big thing about Jot. It's not that big, but this is what claimed to be the big thing uh, about Jot. So instead of traditional sessions over session over servers, you just pass the data. What do we use Jot for? We use it for uh, authentication. And we use it for some secure information exchange. So you can pass uh, security information uh, inside the Jot because you signed it, you can sign it with private public key so you can verify the content has not been tampered. The Jot itself is not encrypted but you have a signature which is signed with a private key. So if you have a signature that is signed with a private key, remember the third part is the signature, then everyone can know that this has not been tampered because you have the hash with the secret key over there. 
API keys are very also another very important concept. You, if you register to some servers, for example Twitter API, then you get some API keys. So those are good uh, not only uh, for access and for the session for security, they're good also to identify which users are using my service and so I can do statistics because they are calling me with the API key. So I can do statistics and I can even monetize the API because I can tell you you are allowed to 1000 requests per month and you have this API key okay you have this API key and I can monitor this API key so when servers gives you an API key they can monetize the API so uh, this uh, was a very brief summary uh, of the concepts of basic authentication I hope now we all, me and you, understand better what basic authentication, SAML or OFF, uh, the difference between version 1 and 2. In version 1 you had to repeat the signatures and JOT, the uh, improvement that it brings with additional data inside the JOT. Tokens, which are basically some kind of credentials we pass, it's some secret that we have, or non-secret, it's uh, something that proves that I can access the service, API keys, and the authorization header <coughs> with the bearer that we use for almost all the above concepts we put here the key or the jot so thank you for listening if you want to see more content uh, i have it here uh, and i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you next time thank you for listening